I think plough your own furrow, find your own way. There is no set way of getting into this business. It is littered with disappointment all the way through. Sometimes you get lucky. Most of the time, you have to have a very thick skin and a very thin skin at the same time because the thin skin is the performing side, seeing the range of I don't know, emotions that you might bring to a part. But the thick skin is being able to walk out of an audition and pretend it never happened because eight times out of ten, you won't get the part. I think, uh, any, any tips for auditions? I think it's linked to my last answer, really, but I think when you go into an audition, bear in mind that the people on the other side of the table want you to be the best you can possibly be, and they want you to be the person who absolutely demands that you cast them. Nerves breed nerves. Nerves for the people interviewing you and nerves for yourself, obviously. So if you can, take a deep breath, picture them in their underpants, all those usual things, <laughs> um, and, uh, and try and relax and... and and somehow, and look them in the eye. Look people in the eye. That's one of the things. I've, when I've, the few times I've been on the other side of the table, so to speak, the nervousness and the, and the lack of uh, um, communication skills can be a big barrier. Retreat! Dear boy. I think in terms of uh, keeping theatre alive, I think, well, it's very simple. Tonight is the first night. This is the first time you've said these words. That's obviously a hard thing to do after an eight-month run, and you can get sort of snow blindness, word blindness. I remember being on stage in a play called uh, My Night with Reg and being halfway through a scene and thinking, hang on, I've already just said, I've just said this just now, which I think most actors would recognise who've done long runs, and you think, oh, God, hang on. And then you think, no, was that last night? Was it, or was it tomorrow night? <laughs> uh, so you can get into... Uh, the day, That's when you take your foot off the pedal, when you've taken your foot off the pedal, and you get a, a sense of, uh, I know how to do this. You never know how to do this. Tomorrow night you can get it right. I think that's the key thing about theatre. It's never right. Tomorrow night might be. <laughs> this isn't a great analogy, but it's a bit like two ends of a telescope. On stage, in theatre, generally speaking, you are looking th through one end and reaching out to an audience. A rule of thumb, generally, is that the opposite is true being on camera. You're letting the audience in to hear, only hear, really. Um, and some actors are, you know, are, are more comfortable reaching outwards than allowing people in. Um, to the extent that you might end up mumbling on stage and no one can hear you because you're so used to the screen, uh, or otherwise being too big for the lens. <laughs> so I think uh, everyone finds their own way eventually. I can say without hesitation that being a member of the National Youth Theatre changed my life. And in, in terms of convincing me finally, uh, even though I was only 17 or so when I joined, that it was uh, a profession, acting was a profession I wanted to investigate further. The skills it gives you, or gave me certainly, and the people I was with, was the, uh, the basic grannies in collaboration, in cooperation, in theatre discipline, or discipline of any sort, working to a schedule, and really just that thing of working towards a common goal um, with a group of people that you only met a few weeks ago, a few days ago. Uh, and I think those skills never leave you. And I've got mates who are in the MIT who work in a variety of different walks of life now, never went into the theatre. But I bet you most of them would, would say that, that that experience, even if it was only, say, a two or three week course over a summer period, taught them certain skills that they're still using today. So I think in terms of life skills, uh, it's unbeatable.